Hello. Uh, so an embargo was lifted so I could now uh, properly talk about this. So basically, um, several months ago now, uh, Carrox uh, informed a few of uh, the testing team that they were going to be releasing gimbals. And it kind of made me think, well, I mean, obviously, first place you would put a gimbal is on a on a plane for, for panning and tilting. But I kind of thought some of the other guys in the testing team are going to be uh, more capable of, of testing that than, than myself. So I thought car would be the perfect opportunity to, to test a gimbal. Um, I bought this, this little car off AliExpress. I put my little 1S hot swap pod on the top of it and myself and my son were able to, to drive around in this, this car park where I am now and it was great fun but the camera bouncing all over the place um, kind of ruined the experience also with the, the controller kind of that came with it um, you were limited to maybe 40 50 meters range and if you drove behind anything it cut out so it wasn't great so I decided then to, to invest in a little little project to make uh, myself an upgraded RC car with a gimbal camera at the front, video transmitter in the middle with Express LRS inside. So let's get into the, the thing that everybody wants to see, the gimbal. The MIPI cable on mine, how it's out the front. That's because I put a screwdriver through the, the original MIPI um, that comes with the gimbal. The, the normal MIPI usually comes out the back. It's a 20 centimeter MIPI that tracks in within the mechanism of the gimbal itself. And then you have about a tail of around 10 centimeters out the back, which normally connects to the VTX. Uh, in my first iteration of this, I had the excess of the cable tucked in under there. And somehow or another, I managed to put a screw the whole way through it. So I've had to actually mod my uh, gimbal with a standard uh, MIPI cable, which I have kind of hanging out the front. It's not ideal. It was user error, but it hasn't really affected the use of, of my gimbal. Um, I'd probably get another 20 centimeter and track it through properly. But just for testing, I thought I would do this because it was a lot easier than taking the gimbal apart to track the cable through. And it seems to have worked okay, so my bad. It's mounted with a little plastic mount at the bottom, which is suspended on some little rubber grommets, which means the whole thing um, is kind of isolated from vibrations. You have full tilt left and right up and down and also roll how it connects there is an 8 pin JST connector on the back with power and ground on the top two pins the next two pins are a UART TX and RX and then the bottom four pins are PWM 1 through 4 now the way I have it wired on mine initially when I was just testing it all I did was supply power to the gimbal and it goes into a real kind of basic FPV stabilized mode and uh, I think the first video that I uh, put on online was purely just the gimbal stabilized and nothing more I've since uh, connected the PWM up to the receiver which I have in there so I now have full PWM control PWM1 on the gimbal selects modes, you have three modes, an FPV mode, then the other two lock various axes, so maybe the first one locks the kind of the roll and the second one uh, kind of pan and roll or vice versa, I can't remember exactly. PWM2 then is the sensitivity, which I have mapped to a slider on my radio. Uh, the, the higher the sensitivity, the more stabilised it becomes. Then your next PWM 1 and 2 are for controls of your pan um, and your tilt. So let's have a look at how I have this set up. So basically, basic wiring on the top plate, our gimbal, 
and I have power and ground connected to a 1S V3 VTX which is being powered off VBAT which is 2S. What that means is on my goggles I get the battery OSD um, off the car itself. So it just means when I'm driving around I can actually see what, what the car is at. The uh, pins at the bottom, one, two, uh, PWM 1, 2, 3 and 4 track underneath and into the receiver. So I have the power to the VTX and the gimbal connected to here which drops down and goes straight onto the XT30. So the gimbal and the VTX are powered directly off the LiPo through this little switch. Over to this side on my, the bottom of the VTX I have a little 5 volt fan and that's what this little connector is for. That runs down and actually joins on to the PWM receiver as well. And these are our connections from the gimbal itself and they just run down to the PWM receiver which is down in there. It's a Matic R24 P6 um, so it has six, six channels and I've chosen this one as well because it has a VBAT pad so I'm able to connect the, the battery um, onto the receiver as well which means I get battery voltage telemetry sent back to the radio so not only can I see the battery voltage on my OSD but it means that if I want to just drive the car line of sight then I would currently have no way of knowing what the battery voltage is but I can now see that on my radio and I've set up my radio to beep when the battery gets to a certain voltage okay so inside so originally in this car there was um, kind of the stock ESC which had a built-in um, 2.4 gigahertz radio transmitter I've swapped it out for this King model mix DRI 20A by 2 amps this is a brushed car with two brushed motors, one at the front and one at the back. So this is a, a dual um, ESC. Two wires from the front motor go down on into the bottom of the ESC to the kind of the motor one and the motor two then up to the front. The way this um, this ESC comes, it's, it's really designed for the likes of a, a tank where one motor is driving the left hand side and one motor is driving the right hand side and obviously I have it set up for one driving the front and one driving the back so I kind of had to change one or two little things on the ESC there's some pads in there there's a mix pad here and then there's there was two signal lines so to put the uh, the ESC into the mode that I would need for for this car I've bridged the mixed pads and I've bridged the signal pads and ran one single wire from them to the throttle on the on the receiver then I have a servo for steering which also goes to the receiver I actually have them as channel 1 and channel 2 and then remapped in the Express LRS web configurator it just it was easier just wiring more than anything then I have my four servo pins for the gimbal in there so that means then I can control it using my Express LRS uh, jumper T20 and on there I just have um, some Expo um, able to do some open TX um, kind of trickery to set a switch for a high medium and a low kind of speed um, so the way I have it set up obviously left hand side throttle right stick is steering what would normally be yaw I have then set to pan the camera and what would I normally have for pitch I have to, to lift the camera up and down so as I'm driving along I can pan the camera and I can look up and look down so how it works in, in terms of the car and the radio Obviously with our radios, we normally have our throttle to the bottom, but with the car that would be fully in reverse. So to initialize the ESC, you have to move the radio to the middle. I did some uh, 
open TX jiggery pokery. And what I've actually done as well is set up effectively an arm switch so the car won't move anywhere unless I flick that switch. And it also means that if, if I panic for whatever reason, you can disarm. Just the muscle memory of flying quads and planes. We have an arm and we have a disarm and I wanted the same for the car. Uh, I have this switch set up within OpenTX. Uh, with the inputs to effectively set up three three-way switch so this way is 100% power that's 75% power then 50% power this one is set up for the three modes for the gimbal with this slider for the sensitivity when I'm when I'm driving if I want to look left I just move that to the left or to the right and while I'm steering if I want to look up and down I move that up and down so for the car throttle left and right for the gimbal pan left and right look up and down there's faster cars out there but for FPV for kind of just getting an idea of trying to learn what cars are all about this is this is plenty. Most of the time when I'm driving at FPV, you're kind of going walking pace along footpaths and things like that. And in terms of re range, I've had it 400 meters now. I've had it behind buildings. So you have the full benefit of Express LRS and the 500 milliwatt VTX with that little V1 Omni has uh, been doing surprisingly well. So yeah, I mean, all in all, it's not bad. It's my first foray into RC cars. It's it's done the job for me. I mean, I know it was 32, 33 pounds. I'm not using the radio anymore. Um, I'm not using the top shell anymore, but as a little kind of platform, um, it's, it's done well. Quite happy with it. Um, I don't know if I'll do any mod more modifications or just just leave it as is. Perhaps get this antenna up higher to go further, but so far it's done pretty well. Pretty happy. <laughs>